and then pick up from there. So welcome, welcome to Strengthening STEM Success Training Systems and Collaboration. Um, as those of you who joined us early have already identified um, that, you know, it takes us all uh, in this uh, STEM pipeline or chain in order to not only build the systems, but sustain the systems through collaboration, working together. Um, and so um, as some of you were talking, I was just smiling as some of your, um, your journeys um, are quite similar to my own. Um, I am Danielle Moore, Instructional Design Lead in DeSoto ISD, and my focus is pre-K through 12 science uh, currently. Um, but the journey um, has been a, a very one. Um, I began um, at Dilla University. My degree is in physics. I started in engineering and then uh, kind of took a break and physics was the path of least resistance. So believe it or not, um, physics was easier than finishing in engineering um, about 22 years ago. And so my background indeed started in, in STEM. And so similar to what um, some of you have said, um, I began teaching my first classes and then I fell in love with teaching and education. And so for the last 22 years, I have been a STEM educator in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And in addition to that, thanks to some of the outreach programs at our universities across the, the, the country, I've been able to do research in those summers off. You know how everybody wants to be a teacher because we have those summers off. But in the summers that I had off, I strategically used that time to continue to build my background and skill set in STEM by doing research uh, appointments across various universities, um, national laboratories, um, in different places so that I could continue to become not only a teacher of science, but a teacher scientist, which for me was very, very important in demonstrating and showing students that yes, you can be a scientist. And so for me, keeping that connection was also very um, fundamental. Um, currently, I work in the DeSoto Independent School District, and for the last two years, I have had the opportunity and the privilege to serve um, a majority minority district in, in enhancing these uh, particular STEM um, strategies across the um, district. Um, in my spare time, I also serve as a DFW regional lead for the Texas Girls Collaborative Project. And with that, um, I work um, not only with my counterparts in DeSoto ISD, but in the Southwest region of Dallas to help strengthen the STEM initiatives, spread the word, and just make sure not only are we doing the things, but we are you know, building the passion and the excitement of the things in, in our area. So this uh, summer, um, we had the opportunity you know, in the middle of COVID to come together with neighboring districts in the Southwest Dallas sector to have a, a collaborative. So we did some online professional development based on STEM best practices and pedagogy. And we also um, do those things right here inside of uh, DeSoto ISD. So beginning in pre-K, we um, have those STEM maker spaces for our three and four year olds. We every year have our STEM expos and where we bring our parents and families and our leaders in informal and formal STEM education together so that we can begin, you know, just working together and having fun like it was a Friday football game. So what you're seeing in the background is a Friday night. And believe it or not, we had over a thousand students and parents um, here on a Friday night having fun and doing things uh, in the STEM and science and technology. We had partners from uh, you know all over the region just there to help to build that excitement and passion um, in STEM in our area. And so that is a, a little bit about me and. Uh, background in STEM. And so as you um, have heard, um, I am predominantly work with a kinder or pre-kinder through 12th grade. And just seeing, you know, the amazing amount of work that um, our teachers do on a daily basis, our 
um, national lab uh, people in the K through 12 outreach, diversity leaders um, in K through 12 outreach, and then looking at the data and not really seeing sustained numbers of change. And so still seeing, you know, a significant decrease in our female representation, our minority representation um, across the, the United States and then abroad as well. And so how can we utilize all of the components that we already do individually to help to strengthen that pipeline um, is just what we're gonna look at um, today. And so of course, you know, everything is, is grounded and based in, in research. Um, just in our beginning introductions, we can already hear that we are doing a lot of amazing ongoing efforts. So it is not um, for lack of efforts um, doing things that are um, very impactful. And so just being able to kind of sit back and examine those things, how can we, despite the efforts that we are all putting in, why are we not getting the outcomes that we um, so, so desire? And so um, when we look at our academic career progression, and uh, someone talked about it today, you know, even our students and our females and minorities in particular, as they are graduating with STEM degrees, those degrees are not translating into STEM careers as they should. And so the numbers there are, are indeed um, decreasing. And so we begin to ask ourselves, why is that happening? And what can we do in our particular realms of support um, in the STEM system and pipeline to, to correct that or to strengthen that. And working uh, closely um, with um, women in STEM, um, we have a very specific um, target in looking at just why are our females continuously underrepresented um, in the large numbers um, as they are. So that's just a little look at the academic progression. I heard someone speak today about the National Lab representation. About uh, 12 years ago, um, I had the, the privilege of spending two summers um, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And uh, let me tell you, the representation kind of mimicked what we see here. The numbers of, of women and minorities in leadership and advanced leadership roles were extremely, extremely small to what we have already identified as we have, you know, female uh, leaders with the degrees, but when we looked at the representation at the very top in those places, such as national labs, um, it uh, did not correlate. Um, and so um, that is just uh, something that I had the opportunity not only to see on paper, but to experience at the national lab um, itself. And so um, I really, really um, like this from the womeninstem.net. You know, not only um, do we know that there is a leak in the pipeline, but something has to be wrong with the plumbing, right? Because um, if we're doing all of these things, why is it not working? And so um, that led me in the work that I do to look at the pipeline the components that are identified as the leaks, so to speak, and then to figure out what is going on with this internal plumbing that is causing um, us to continue to see a decrease in our female and minority representation in the area of STEM. And I will uh, look at the chat um, momentarily. So when we look at this uh, pipeline, uh, we can identify and we, you know, can see we have all of these leaks here um, in our uh, system. So what in the K through 12 arena, we try to stop one leak. You know, we have one place where stopping that particular leak. We also have people in our um, secondary advanced academics. They try to kind of do their part to fix the plumbing, the, the, the leak right there in that part. Then we have our people who are in our outreach programs, um, in our workforce. They try to do their best to, to fix the leak in their particular area. Um, you know, we have our 
um, pre-K systems that we're, we're getting our STEM downs, our early childhood. So everywhere there's a leak, we are trying to fill, you know, those leaks. One of the problems or things that I've seen is that if you plug this one leak and, and you do this one, if you don't stop them all at the same time, your output is not going to change. And I think that's what we're seeing in our pipeline. We are all working really hard, but throughout our efforts, we have not created a sustained way to fix all of the plumbing at every area at the same time for a long enough period that it truly, truly um, has an impact. And so we're going to um, look at that. Um, as we were introducing ourselves earlier today, it, it caused me to kind of reflect on just the experiences of women. And the reflection came, you know, from the, um, the workforce, you know, in the workforce, just the experiences of people at the leadership level. How do we feel, you know, is the female representation, the, do they feel as valued as male counterparts? Are all of those things are very important in not only performance, but retention. Because if as a female, I am not feeling valued for the work that I do, then I may choose another career. And so that not just happens at the uh, workforce level, that also happens in our classrooms. So one of the things, you know, I've seen several times as a physics instructor for over 15 years, um, our female students in courses that are advanced as physics and our sciences are not being challenged uh, enough. And so their experiences, um, because they are female, are starting very early and they're not always positive. Um, and so we want to not only look at those experiences at the you know, level when they get into career, but looking how our female students experience those things beginning as early um, as our pre-kinder and kindergarten uh, babies. And so some of the things and where we have recognized that we can um, repair that leaky pipeline, we can fix the plumbing, um, comes from um, the basis from the Association for Women in Science. Um, they have identified seven key areas where if we work on those things, we will be able to uh, strengthen our STEM pipeline. And so here in DeSoto ISD science, what we do is we've identified five that directly correlates to the K through 12 arena. And we have modified and adjusted those five to incorporate best practices that will help us to fill those leaks simultaneously. And then over a um, period of two, three, four, five years, continue to firm up that internal plumbing so that we can not only stop the leaks in the pipeline, but also have sustained growth. So we're going to um, look at, and I'm going to stop for a second and look at the chat. Um, I can pull it up again. <laughs> yeah, I love that too. Sorry, my chat box is like on the other side. And so, you know, one thing which we've all identified is because we're here, we have to broaden the networks, right? And so we don't just broaden the networks when we get to the college level. When we get to the K through 12 arena, you know, we have to get into a habit of practice of broadening our networks as well. And so one of the things that um, we've done um, over the last two years in DeSoto Science is we have established networks that are within our region, very close to us, within a drive's distance, so that we can start not only to broaden the networks between our adults or our teachers, but broaden the networks for our students, because we have to um, model and show them those networks really early so that they begin to internalize that, hey, this STEM and science and engineering, this, this culture of thinking is normal and natural, and that can be infused in everything they do on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And so to do that, um, we have partnered with our UNT Dallas uh, partners, which is a few uh, miles away, the uh, Tapia Center and Rice University, um, the Arboretum, the Zoo, the Perot Museum, and then our Design Connect Create. We have worked with those people to not only do these things one time, but to have an ongoing established network of support so that our teachers, our students, and our families are building those networks um, together. And so in the K through 12 arena, we have to work as a system and not one person can do this thing alone. And so we have to, um, as our uh, K through 12 outreach, um, ensure that our families are building these networks side by side so that our students are supported in their work. And it's not just STEM is the thing I do when I'm um, at school. It is STEM is a culture and embedded in the way that I think and, and who I am. So literally shifting the narrative um, of behind how do and why do we broaden our networks. The second thing the Association um, for Women in Science uh, talked about was offering opportunities for leadership development. Um, some of you identified early um, that you do that at the university level, um, at the uh, uh, job or career level. But in the K through 12 level, we need to build our leadership as well. And so one of the things that I really um, I value is that our kindergarten science teachers are teacher scientists. They have leadership roles as well in science education. And some of the ways we um, enhance those leadership roles are through our, you know, science fellowships that we have with area universities. Um, our professional development where our science teachers are teacher leaders, not only in pedagogy, but in practice. We partner with regional and national teams to uh, grow and learn and work on a national level as well. And we also have those teacher leaders involved in the design and implementation of our curriculum. So it's no longer a top down, one person says it and everybody does it, but a leadership model where we all work together collectively. In the K through 12 arena, that is very important because if I feel like I have agency and ownership, I'm gonna work harder and smarter as a teacher. And so building those leaders are an extremely um, important um, uh, value. Um, you can see here our leadership teams at work. They presented at CAST in our regional conferences. Um, I remember this one specifically because they had me holding a baby kangaroo, which freaked me out. And so that was my, the highlight of my CAST event, um, being photographed, uh, terrified of a baby kangaroo. But it was so much fun being there with our leaders, um, first grade teachers, um, presenting on best practices, um, leading roles, um, and presenting, and all um, throughout our, our system, uh, beginning in, in kindergarten. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I hear Gianna. I, I, it was wonderful when I looked at the pictures, but when I had that baby kangaroo in my hand, I was literally terrified, right? Okay, so now you all know my weakness, but um, it was a wonderful experience. And these leaders, um, kindergarten all the way through our high school teachers, it was very important for us to have those type of experiences where they are leading and learning simultaneously. Um, as we uh, continue to um, repair that uh, leak in plumbing that we see in the pipeline, um, the Association for Women in Science suggests that we distribute and we recognize the work evenly. And so we don't put more work on our males or our females or our minorities, but we distribute the work evenly. And we also recognize the growth and progress of that work. And so in DeSoto Science, as an addition to what women in science suggested, 
the recognition of growth and progress in the K through 12 arena is very, very important that we build again that agency and feeling of success so that they don't feel like we are isolated in our thinking and our passion for wanting to not just teach our standards, right? We don't want to just do that. We want to instill the true passion for learning and growing in STEM in our, in our, our community, in our students. And so we also recognize the growth and the progress, not only of our students, but of our teachers, of our leaders, and everyone in our system. Um, one thing that um, the Association for Women in Science also noted was that um, microaggressions and biases had to be addressed. Um, for me, um, as a teacher, it's easy to navigate away from those things and not identify them or address them. But as a leader in STEM education, it is imperative that not only do we address them, but we identify those microaggressions um, when we see them. The National um, Association um, or NAEP for Culturally Responsive Teaching um, says that micro messages are just those small, uh, overt, unconscious messages that may happen and occur, sometimes they're conscious as well, but may happen and occur, and they might give feelings of, you know, um, negative feelings or micro inequities, which if I'm a female and a minority experiencing, it's not blatant, no one's saying you don't, you know, belong here to do this thing, but the overt action may lead people to, to feel uncomfortable. Maybe I shouldn't be in this environment or something just isn't right. And so that may be a part of the reason our females are not staying in the careers as even though they have the, the degrees. And so we have to not only um, identify when those things happen or occur, but also have systemic ways to, to address them. Um, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, they you had what they called cultural sensitivity trainings and ongoing support because you had a very diverse culture of men, women, different um, nationalities represented from across the world. And so being able to identify um, things about each other's cultures that would prohibit those microaggressions because some of those are not even known. Some people may not be aware that they are unconsciously offending someone else, a female representation or minority. So it is important to address those microaggressions so that we can avoid those unconscious uh, things. And so one of the, the articles that I, I found, and I'll include all of these um, um, in the, um, the, the presentation, is just you know, some of the practices um, that you know, people have. They may not identify it, but some of the things and studies have said that you know, it is continuously um, hiring biases um, amongst males in life sciences. And I'm sure, you know, if we looked up things about physical sciences and STEM careers, um, those biases are still um, there and may be undergirding some of the reason that we do not have continual and sustained growth with our female representation. And so that implicit bias and microaggressions and, you know, um, 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 unconscious um, micro messaging are things that are very, very important that not only we identify very early, but we talk about them um, in our K through 12 arenas, our university arenas, in our work arenas, so that we can figure out syst systemic ways to identify and address them early enough to start um, to minimize uh, those um, situations. And then we have cultivating uh, accountability. So how do we do all these things and we are still accountable um, for all the things that we do? 
So the Association for Women in Science suggests, you know, they say cultivate accountability, you know, have everybody accountable, but how can we specifically do that? And so in DeSoto ISD Science, what we do is we provide an aligned comprehensive curriculum. So we eliminate, I don't know what to do, because now we know what, how to do, and you have that prep work. We set measurable goals. And so the goals are a tracking and monitoring process. And that goal is not just tied to a test or a standard, but we also look at um, the feelings of students. Are they comfortable when they come to your class? Are they comfortable performing labs? With, are they scared to, to do a lab and touch equipment? Or have you developed systems uh, of success? And so we track those things continuously and also provide ongoing feedback and support in that cycle of, um, again, shared ownership, but doing that across the system and with our, not only teachers, but also with our students. So everybody has a feeling of support and ownership in their learning. So the accountability doesn't seem so rigid. It just seems as a thing that promotes success. And so that's one of the areas where we can um, help to firm up the leaks in the pipeline um, and how to, to do that. Um, I found this particular national survey, um, which says um, we have uh, a national survey of science and mathematics education and K through three kind of showed that, you know, People only spent 19 minutes a day teaching science, while they spent 89 minutes in other areas. So over three, four, five, six times the amount of time um, teaching a subject area and negating another. So one of the things that we do is we find ways that we even the, the playing field. You know, we don't just teach this thing because it's being tested. We provide equal, viable um, teaching and learning in every class in every way, so that the next time the national surveys are done, we have seen that we are not just um, eliminating one content um, versus another because of, you know, maybe the area, if it's tested, if it's not tested. So sharing up that accountability system that's not just based on um, testing met metrics. Um, how can we do that? So in our original pipeline where we have our plumbing that's just all over the map, it's not working, we don't know what's actually going on. We literally look at broadening our network, K through 12, uh, across our universities, our systems, everywhere, right? So we're going to stop this leak. We're going to broaden our networks holistically, not just our teacher networks and our leader networks, but our student, family, and our community networks so that we are all, you know, connected together. We're also going to evenly distribute and recognize our service work. We're going to offer leadership opportunities, address microaggressions and biases, and we're going to cultivate accountability. The thing that's different here is that now K through 12, pre-K through 12 even, um, university level, we are all doing it at the exact same time across our system. And so what I, um, you know, uh, venture to say is that we could hold these gaps closed, stop these leaks for a long enough time to sustain our system, broaden, deepen, enhance every single year, monitor, provide feedback, celebrate success, build the culture of STEM across our combined networks simultaneously, we will indeed not just repair the pipeline, but we will develop a pathway to sustaining um, that particular success. And so for us, we need to continue to do what you all are doing each and every day, but we need to do it simultaneously and ongoing so that we can see the benefit of, of, of an increase in our female and minority representation um, in STEM. Some of the places, um, the NAPEquity.org 
Um, I've worked with them and so I got some of the research from them on microaggressions and you all can go back and so I put those in there. Um, as well as my contact information, um, I am danielle.moore at desotoisd.org. Um, I even have a Twitter. I am at more physics at Twitter. And then I'll share the collaboration link um, after the session. So if you want to just kind of meet and collaborate and continue our partnerships, um, we can do that um, as well. I am going to stop sharing my screen.